You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Oh, oh, hey, we're here. Well, good morning, Alan Aguirre, host of the Chameleon Church Show, coming to you live and direct. So it's it's January second. Welcome to we. So like we were just saying, we made it to 2024. The real question is, are we going to get the heck out of here alive? Not sure if we're going to be able to get out of 2024 alive, people. There's so much crap going on. I mean, I was looking at my feed. It's like, what do we talk about? So last Tuesday, after after this show last Tuesday, I guess I went on a rampage and just started posting all this stuff that is happening out there on, on planet Earth, out there outside your outside your window. Uh, New York, look at this, chanting no Christmas as usual and shutting down, can- oh, this was in can- Canada and Canada, and shutting down Canadian Christmas isn't a good way to gather support from Canadians. Um, Palestinian protesters were chanting no Christmas as usual. Well, here, I can do this, look at this. Yeah. I'm not divulging too much, but there you go, look at that. Chanting no Christmas as usual. That's in Canada, cops and everything. I mean, it's, it's it's a Palestinian protest. It's it's now what was it in in, uh, in L.A.? It's made up of Pal- like actual literal uh, Muslims now are in it. Look at this. Pro Hamas protesters converge in Manhattan, lugging a blood red mock nativity scene and chanting "Christmas is canceled here" and "Long live the Intifada." This is in New York. You gotta love it. See, it has nothing to do with anything that they say it is. This is what it has to do with. It has to do with going after Jews and Jews and Christians. They don't like Jews and they don't like Christians. They want us dead. They want us out. Um, I've been wondering when you get this feature where you could screen share. Oh, well, I'm not even screen sharing it. We have, it's, we've always had that feature. It's just real kludgy. This is actually, I have it set up that I can actually share one of my monitors as a camera. The NYPD goes into level three. Look at that. Because of these people. Riots outside Gaza police station. Palestinians are protesting Hamas because Hamas killed people that were trying to get to the supplies that the world's sending that Hamas steals and sells and uses for their army, not the Palestinians. Oops. Christmas canceled protests. This is that protest in Manhattan. Look at that. But they have Christmas flags. <laughs> Look at this. They, they were getting into some scuffles with NYPD. And then during the Times Square's New Year's Eve, there was a scuffle with cops a couple blocks away. And look at this Muppet. I think this is a guy in California. This guy, they, 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 were, they, were, they, were, they were chanting Allah Akbar. They were, they were doing all of that, man. Look at this. Iranian university students refused to walk on over the United States flag and the Israeli flag that was painted on the ground. And they're shaming these guys for doing so. Look at that. See, this is what this is what's the best thing. This is how awesome our our uh, our, our enemy is. We've got these massive dolts. Can I call them that? I mean, we have the most in unintelligent people in this country doing these rallies, supporting Hamas, doing these rallies, these faux pro Palestinian rallies, right here in the U.S. Um, burning American flags, burning down, is burning Israeli flags. But then look, here we are in Iran, and the, and and look at the amount of people that are on. It's the opposite. What's that? It's the opposite. Yeah, the exact opposite. And if these woke 
University students, leftists, liberal leftist Democrats went there. Well, half of them would be thrown off rooftop. And then look at this. Washington, D.C., Germany, Canada, London, Italy, Massachusetts, Paris, and more. This is that's where, that's where all this is happening. It's like an anti-Semitic, pro-Hamas, pro-Islamic spirit is, uh, oh, isn't he cute, um, is, is happening out there. It's, it's, it's insane. It's literally crazy. It's just, it's, it's Old, old stuff. It's crazy what's going on. Look at this. This is a good one. East Jerusalem. The structure in the middle is the tomb of Absalom, right here. The tomb of Absalom. And the empty surrounding hillsides are the mystical ancient Palestinian city of East Jerusalem. <laughs> I love that one. That's one of my favorite. I've been playing, showing that one for years. And then there's this stuff that's going on. Oh my gosh. About all the fraud, <laughs> the fraud in our government. Oh, it's just bad. And this guy, man, this guy's looks he looks like he's channeling Obama, but he's actually going after him, which is a good thing. Oh look at oh look at I look like one of those those woke people with the blue hair. Eh, except this is like 30 years ago. <laughs> look at this. And then Islamic jihadists slaughter 160 Christians day after Christmas in Nigeria. This is oh. wow. And then this guy, look at this Muppet, the Chicago mayor or the governor of Chicago. Stop sending us illegals to our sanctuary city. Stop it. This is you're causing a a, a national um what's it call it? Security by sending us illegals to our sanctuary city. Wow. This guy's a there's the face of stupidity right there. Unbelievable. Oh, uh, this was a good one. What would we do if China kept attacking us? Well, we would just roll over like you're trying to get Israel to do. And then you've got you, you need a new show. It's called Surfing the Internet with Alan. Oh my gosh. Chinese military coming into our country. No kidding, Muppets. LA, look at this. Culminates with chance. LA, that's the LA one. It's just oh, this guy was a big Muppet. He's like, Well, I was arrested. Well, what were you doing? I was sitting in the street. That's against the law. And the guy goes blank. There's no critical thinking out there with these people. This is New York, uh, New Jersey Mall. This couple, this, these people get, this family gets assaulted. Look at this, these freaks, man. They get assaulted for being Jews. And look at this. This is in Chicago. Now they're playing Hamas insurgent Muslim terrorist cosplay in the streets of Chicago. Are you surprised? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is amazing what's going on out there. That's just last week. That's just like in the last five to six days. I lost my CCW yesterday. How? What's what? That? They passed a law. I still have it, but I can't even carry it walking down a sidewalk because it's a public sidewalk. Oh, I heard about that. It's I called SB2. It, they restricted everywhere. You, you can't even carry. And if you're in your car, where no you can carry, law. you can't even carry there. No castle law. Wow. But fortunately, we live up in Humboldt, and the sheriffs up here turned a blind eye. Yeah, the sheriffs are your friends over there. Wow. Yeah, I heard that. They, um, yeah, I heard about that. And there's a bunch of lawsuits, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's not going to be any easier over there, that's for sure. No. What else? What else? And then Aspen, I, I, was, I didn't even notice this, but apparently Aspen posted uh, Israel's fighting on seven fronts. Yes. And then we listed that. Oh my yep. gosh! I saw what, uh, what's the name of that movie? Golda. Um, you know what I'm talking about? No. The the movie that's out about the uh, prime minister of Israel. What's her name? Golda Meir. 
Yeah, I saw that movie over the weekend. Very difficult to watch that and not think about what's going on out there today. How, is it pretty accurate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, it's good. It's good. Um, it's concerning. It's very uh, triggering. I'll, I'll put it that way. But it's almost impossible to watch without thinking about what's literally going on out there right now. Because, you know, they're attacked by Egypt and Syria. Surprise attack. Unprovoked. Uh, it was. It's about the um, in the uh, Six Day Yom, War. No, the Yom Kippur War, seventy three. So it, it happens in October of October of seventy three, which is why they did what they did in October of twenty twenty three. Fifty years later, they're just same playbook. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy yep. stuff. I like that. What, what, on the the whole that whole generals, the prophets, the two hundred prophets. Where she just, it's Matthew twenty four for twenty twenty four. Sounds like an accurate. It's interesting. There was there was a consistency. I printed out that thing that uh, Tim Cruz did. He had you guys all talked about it. It's amazing just about the consistency of the prophetic uh, feeling around the planet. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> what, so, did you guys check out Saturday? How was our for our patrons? Did you see that, Lenny? I so, couldn't get on for some reason. I tried every which way, and I couldn't get on. Not, that doesn't make any sense. All you have to do is go to the Facebook page, dude. I did. Facebook would not let me on. It's weird. So I That's just weird. I tried. Eh? Well, it's, you know, but it's up there now. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting uh, little bits and pieces. And yeah. I've been printing that stuff out. Trigger okay. Tuesday. That's, I guess that's what we're calling it from now on. That's what people are calling it. Trigger Tuesday. Yeah. It's, you uh, know what's interesting? Yesterday, it's amazing how the media avoided all the Palestinians. See, they got the power to do this. And yeah. you watch the Rose Parade. It was all bunnies and flowers. Everything was perfect. Football, don't interrupt the oil and the wine. Don't interrupt my football games. I watched a little <laughs> bit of the parade. It was yeah, just so another I, beautiful oh yeah. Southern California day. Yeah. As they turn the corner on Orange to Colorado Boulevard. When, when I was a kid, we used to we after I got out of high school, we used to sleep out overnight. It was a big party time before I came to the Lord. So you used to party, Lenny? I used to party. Like it was 19, what, 69? There sorry. you go. <laughs> yeah, we lived a block, you know, I lived only a, a mile from it in Eagle Rock. So. Yeah. But it was amazing how they conveniently avoided all the uh, noise and all the media when it came to their entertainment and it tells you how where the noises are coming from and yet just those small voices are disrupting the whole world mm -hmm. just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it which only supports what we we talk about that's right when the when the seven mountains unite when they all unite the small little percentage <coughs> right, this little niche group they can take over because they, they they're because they right, they've taken over the schools, they've taken over government, taken over the media, taken over over entertainment. Now they're also in politics. It's five of the mountains right there. Now, if we can take now, that's why it's all about decimating the church and the family. Those are the last two mountains that they, they need to take. It's crazy, man. Crazy stuff. Chris? What do you think? What are we going to do? <laughs> I'm frightened. <laughs> oh, my gonna... gosh. The world's coming, <laughs> crashing down. Where's <laughs> Dr. Seuss when you need him? Oh, You know what? I'm just going to watch some more Netflix. That's fine. <laughs> exactly. Then I don't have to think about it. Watch some more Netflix. It'll all go away. Yeah, 
I'm sure <laughs> glad I'm not re- wasting my time reading the Bible. That's the thing, man. We made it, like you said, Lenny. We made it to 2024. I just, I just don't think. It, I just don't know if we're gonna get out of it alive. Yeah. Now, what are we gonna do? <laughs> it says we're supposed to rejoice and look up, for a redemption is drawing near. Man, think about this. As bad as it feels to us, think of those first century Christians. Huh. Yep. It's this is nothing. No, it's not, it's not nothing, but 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 relatively, relatively yeah. to what the the oh, first, yeah. first 70, first 200, first whatever. Man, I, no one's trying I mean, to crucify. That. No one's trying to crucify me and light me on fire to light their chariot, naked chariot riding in the middle of the which, night. <laughs> which makes it when I'm re- uh, especially when I'm reading the epistles and and you read this and you're like, oh wait a second, wait is he's actually. He's writing this from prison. Why is he in prison? You know, beaten near de- near death. The Hebrews chapter sawn in two. I mean, you're you're just like, man, this was really happening. This was really this is really. I think we talked about it last week when I said, I go, oh, we were talking about raising the dead, and I was like, man, I don't even think I have faith for that. I don't. I don't even. I don't even. I don't know how they did it. It's incredible incredible how those early christians survived have you read um uh, i'm reminded of this book uh what's his name it's a guy that wrote art is war or war the war of art or something but it's the it's a it's a novel on um it's telling the the story of it's paul or peter that's on the run it's like a it's and Oh, and this is really bad because I don't know that I can't remember the title. I have to look it up. Um, but it's a it's a novel set in the time after Jesus was crucified, and it's telling the story of like this messenger that's trying to get one of the epistles to the people to the 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 Christians that fled up north. And it's really it's a really good book. But it's talking about it's it's talking about. Um, it's, it's telling the story of what was actually happening with the Romans and the Romans, the soldiers are, and then they, they're chasing him. And then it defines they they put him up on a cross, this guy they capture. And it goes into like what a crucifixion was in detail, but it's like graphic. It's written in story form. And, and it just, it was bleak then. Yeah. It was so it was rough, man. There was no law. You had no rights. You're an enemy of the state. They're out to hunt you. Yep. And it, and it's and it's. I don't know how far America, United States. I don't know how far this goes, especially in our lifetime. But it's uh, really bleak out there, man. In this, bleak, this country, we're being invaded. Not, we're literally it, being invaded by foreign nationals. It's not as bleak as it was, but it's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, do we have faith for this? Do we have faith for what's coming? Well, I've always desired, I've always said, I mean, for a long time I've said, you know, I really desire to see the return of Jesus, the second coming. But I know what that means when it comes to right. what it looks like outside my window, you know? Hmm. That's why it says that's what the endurance of the saints is all about. The perseverance and the endurance of the saints. It's that place of faith in the midst of utter chaos. And okay, go back 2000 years when they're being chased. They didn't have the conveniences of even getting out of the weather. They don't have transportation. They don't have communication. It was like they were on, they were cavemen with, uh, blankets around them trying to run away it's not like look at what we have today and yet the scripture teaches that what even what we have today it's unfathomable it says his words the red words there will never be anything like what's about to happen to this planet (sighs) so yeah we can think about that and you look at that and you go that scares the hell out of me 
And yet at the same time, it's we, we always dreamed about it. We're going, yeah, we're going to live till he comes back. Uh, get ready. And you know what? Mm. There's a there's a there's an anointing, though, that comes with the Holy Spirit, not yeah. only to bring peace, but to bring the truth and to see people accept that truth. It's, it ain't going to be mass. I wish it was mass stadiums. And it might be for certain periods. We just don't know yet. But it's that one person at a time. It's that little treasure hunt that you go, man, I know someone that can take away all your fears. I found I found this book. It is by Stephen Pressfield, a man at arms. Let me yeah. read this. From the acclaimed master of historical fiction comes an epic saga about a reluctant hero, the Roman Empire, and the rise of a new faith. Jerusalem in the Sinai Desert, first century AD, in the turbulent aftermath of the crucifixion of Jesus, officers of the Roman Empire acquire intelligence of a pilgrim bearing an incendiary incendiary letter from a religious fanatic to insurrections, insurrectionists in Corinth. The content of this book free down the empire. What's interesting is, you know, then it was, it was like immediate. It was like growing. the The movement was growing, and what's happening with us is there was there was a de facto, and it seems to be the worse it gets, it's shrinking. Right. Like people, uh, people are are. Is that because then it was really bad, hopeless? dire and the idea of a hero yeshua jesus of the messiah look they were looking they were looking for the messiah to bring them out of this darkness we're here it's like you were saying with entertainments our god you know lenny that's kind of what you were saying that we're, we're comfortable no need no need for hope or less need or it just this feeling of and so now when people are on the christianity faith ship but now it's getting rough because it's politically incorrect. People are jumping off. It's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, it's the, the, the ambivalence is outrageous. That's in the body of, of uh, the church, the Western church. I'll just stay, stay with the Western church. It's ambivalent. And you don't hear a lot of them talking behind the pulpits. You talk about what's politically correct. They have their own system of what's religiously correct. And they don't even know that they we're in a time where we can still pray against the principalities and powers and have the authority take the, the initiative. There will come a time when, boom, it hits and all of our heads have to bow low. But the church doesn't even teach that the authority that we have, let alone the authority of the kingdom to heal the sick and cast out devils and raise the dead. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's because having crit critical thinkers in your being a critical thinker in your faith profile, it doesn't necessarily go hand in hand. No, you know, Christians just aren't those type of people. Um, <laughs> they, they go, Why is this happening? Read the Bible. <laughs> you, so, two things were said insurgency, insurgents, and uh, religious fanatics. That's what Joe Biden, State of the Union, called evangelical fundamentalist, conservative evangelical Christians, also known as MAGA, and he said we were a threat to democracy. They've already set the stage. And even prior to that, remember, they said go out and, and shame MAGA people, you know, shame them publicly, hate them, hit them, hurt them, you know, attack them. The Democrats, right? So, so conservative American Christians are have already been labeled as a threat to democracy. And you add that with what's going on out there with you know the Jews and you know they're going after Jews and Christians. That's what see. That's what they don't understand. This infatala. That's what they, that's what they don't understand. What this all that rhetoric that they're spewing that they don't understand. You know, free, free Palestine. They don't know what that means. They don't. They don't. They don't know what that means. They don't know what river to the sea means. They don't know. They don't know what all these chants mean. They don't. Know, they have literally no idea what what they're saying. Um, is an actual direct assault against um, 
Christianity and Judaism. Some of them know, but some of them don't. But that's what that's literally what's what's going on. You know, it's. As much as Christianity wants to divorce itself because of you know the great Catholic Church debacle, as much as Christianity wants to separate itself and divorce itself from Judaism, they can't. See, here's the thing. I I had to deal with it with a Muppet over the weekend. Well, I dealt with a Muppet over the weekend, uh, a Torah observant believer spewing that you know zionism is nazism modern day zionism is nazism and i'm like well there's your problem it's a you're using a modern day you know uh you know you have no idea what you're talking about but this the church's stance that the israel in the land isn't the israel of god or the israel of the bible is a is about the same level of demonic utterance as we're not under the law. You know what yep. I'm saying? Exactly. It's like, if the, if that was true, if that was a truth that the Israel in the land isn't the Israel of the Bible, Islam wouldn't be so dead set on annihilating them for one. It hasn't nothing. It, it's, it's only partially about the land. It's more about the people group. So when you when you consider that Islam wants Jews dead, eradicated, that people group, and they have no problem mixing Christianity into that, lumping Christianity into that. See, because they understand there's a there's a there's a symbiotic relationship there, as much as Christianity doesn't understand it for 1800 plus years. Paul said that that the way Christianity was a sect of Judaism. See, so the fact that Christianity doesn't understand that or know that <laughs> doesn't keep the reality that the spirit realm does understand, and that's, it is a symbiotic, you know, it is, it is connected. And the fact that Christian, uh, that there's a huge, bunch, there's a massive amount, a, 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 I would say a majority amount of, or close to, um, I mean, there's too many Christians out there that don't believe Israel is the Israel of the Bible. That the people, that the Jews in the land aren't Israel of the Bible. They don't believe that. They li- there's a whole bunch of people that don't believe that. Um, yep. Doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean it's not true. It doesn't mean that's that they're correct. Just look at what's going on. So then, because then, and then, of course, that begs the question: Who is it then that Jesus is coming down to deliver from her mortal enemies? If it's not these people, then who is it? So, so are are the, are the people in the land that if you if you believe that the is that the Jews in the land aren't the Jews of the Bible, then you're then you have to right. I doubt they go this far in their thinking because it's not critical thinking. I really doubt they go to the next. The next idea, the next thought, which is, okay, then who is Jesus delivering when he comes back on his second coming? So then so then it begs the question, are the people that are there in the land now, the Jews that are in the land there now, if they're not the if they're not real Jews, if they're not real Hebrews, if they're not the Jews of the Bible, are they are they then eradicated? And then a whole new wave of people uh, than an entirely different people group who you believe or say are the real true Jews of the Bible, then occupy that land, and then that's who Jesus comes down for, right? Because then who are those people? They can't answer any of these questions, mind you. Who are those people? Where are they now? And what qualifies them? They can't answer those questions. Just like that that insane, insane, and I'm not saying like crazy weird no like they're literally insane in the head group that believe that we're living in the millennium reign and then i ask all right so then that means jesus is on earth yes who is he and where is he we don't know <laughs> it's like you're an idiot oh my gosh who would want to believe that who would want to believe that jesus is on the earth today right now and as one of his followers i don't know who it is 
nor do I know where he is. That's called a goat. <laughs> it's it's does they just don't have it's like it's like they have no brain cells. I'm not quite sure. Oh. There's no reasoning. And they can't answer the basic questions. That's a basic question. If you believe Jesus is on earth and you're his follower, it's not weird for me to ask who is he and where is he? Uh, we don't know. In the same way, if the people in Israel in the land of Israel today are not real Jews, that's what they're saying. They're not real Jews. They're imposters. They're not the Jews of the Bible. Okay, then who are these people? Are they going to be eradicated? And then then and then who, where and who are the real Jews that are supposed to be in the land that Jesus is coming for? They they can't answer any of these questions. So it's like that's they they did then they then shut the freaking heck up. Shut up. You're 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 a mindless idiot. Why are you speaking? You're you're, you're that's not even a, it's not even an opinion. It's worse than an opinion. You're just, you're just speaking out of your, oh my gosh. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And they're, they're throwing out that word Zionism. It's, it's tantamount to, to Nazism. And it's like, that's anti-Semitism. <laughs> and they don't even see it. And they think I'm an idiot. And they think I'm the idiot. Because I haven't figured it out. Rothschilds, you know, and, and on and on and on. It's like, oh, man. Because, see, what's more important? It's almost to the level of the importance of wearing tassels. What's more important to the, ma the vast majority of Torah observers out there? More important than having actual spiritual gifts and abilities to heal the sick, cast out demons, speak in tongues, right? Right? Conspiracy theory. Hey, That's more important to them than anything else. I saw an angel standing yeah. on the United States with a red spray paint can, and he was drawing a line. <laughs> what are you doing? A line in the sand. He was spraying it. And it's, there's, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm facetious right now. I wish I did see that, but I guarantee you there's a. But the fact that he's got a spray can. he got a spray can. Don't you need an ID to going, get a spray can nowadays? Yeah, that's it. He's drawing that line. Well, you know what's interesting? I don't know how what metric you use to gauge this. roam the earth and procreate? <laughs> I, I don't know what metric we could use on this, but, you know, just the searches that I need to do to try to get the information I get, there has been a plethora, that means a lot of things, you know, <laughs> of Speaking people to the critical you know, standing up and talking about replacement theology. And it's oh. more in the charismatic camps than I've ever seen before in my life. And... I posted this one thing and oh boy, I got a lot of bad feedback and it was about Mike Pickle. Yeah. He had some issues. All those things happen. Some of the people I said, look, I mean, pray for the guy, pray for the guy that him and him and his family, wherever it lies, wherever it falls. But what people don't realize is that about seven months ago, he was preaching on, and he still is the whole John 14 through 17 but he stopped, and in the middle of it, he goes, I have to tackle the issue of replacement theology. Seven months straight. And I didn't, and you know what? I got a lot of kickback on this. And I said, you know, there's a reason all of a sudden he got taken down. Because it's an old thing that happened 25 years ago, and we had the old Burbank Vineyard crew in Kansas City when John Wimber was defending him from accusations and allegations way back when, this was years ago when, when I was still at Burbank and the Park City Church came and all that when Bill Lynch was there. But the moment he started teaching on replacement theology and he says, I, I can't let this go because I don't know where we're at because he's always been one of those ones. He goes, oh, the Lord's not coming back for 200 years. Oh, he's not coming back for 60 years. Last year he goes, I, I can't say that anymore. I go, this is just it. 
And all of a sudden, six months ago, he pushed it and it's he still they still have his stuff on the YouTube. And I'm going, huh. And he got taken out. And I just and when I said that, they're going, oh, you're just trying to talk. You're just you're just trying to uh, let him off easy. And I'm going, I'm letting anybody off easy. I go, you people have no discernment. And I got into this one with this one brother that used to be in Shiloh. I go, you have no discernment in your head. You don't even see what's out there and what's coming. Because a guy pulls a zipper down, even if he did or he didn't, that's where you judge him right there. And I go, I can't do that. It's, it's, here's, it's, it's a lot easier to do that than because if oh, I can yeah. disqualify you, then what you're saying doesn't count. And I don't have to listen to it. It's like, it's, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I know. It's not like they're listening, though. If they're not, you know, so they're not. Those people don't listen anyway. No, they don't. I know. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. I know. But it's good that a lot of people, hopefully, in the different camps that we've been with. Starting to wake up. The cage is being rattled. The mainstream boy, they're they're going liberal. And what people don't realize too is <laughs> this is where we got to pray for Israel. Their Supreme Court just had a ruling over there, and all of a sudden the liberal people are raising their heads in Israel, and that's making it hard for Netanyahu. And uh, yet that has to come when you read Ezekiel. 38 verses three through nine, uh, their covenant with death. That's what they, they use that terminology when all of a sudden they're making their treaties with the other nations. But the interesting thing is those other nations are going to come in and Messiah is going to save them all on that, on the, on the, on that day when he comes. But the reality is, is we're going to start to see them go more liberal and that's going to throw everybody for a loop. And they don't know what they're looking at and what they're watching for. And uh, yet, right now, I, I, I totally believe they're gonna. It's they're gonna play whack a mole. They're gonna get Hamas, but it's gonna pop up in a different place. We we think we know what that is, and it's gonna be Iran. It's it's out there. They know that. And uh, they'll always have that issue in the Gaza until he comes back. But the the interesting thing watching Israel too. We know that there has to be these liberal woke people coming up in their ranks too. And there's a lot to pray for there. It's interesting. It's, a lot of those prophetic guys, they had it right. It's going to be an interesting. Let the bride put on her war boots. <sighs> these things are unfolding before our eyes. It's like we've mind. never seen it, before. But you know what boggles my mind most or more? And and I and it's not out of any sort of sick, yeah. No, man, it's it's horrifyingly tragic. That's right. It's, is the sheer numbers of people of faith, people that believe they're people of faith, people that identify as people of faith, people that really seriously think they're people of faith, and their inability. To read the signs of the time, I their know. inability, like you said, to discern, their Ill, in, inability to, re, to for critical thinking, their inability to 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 they're they're going to end up on the wrong side of this thing. They're already on the wrong side of this thing, <laughs> and they're just going to be even more far removed as it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Jesus is not coming back the way they want him to. <laughs> He's not coming back how or who, doing what. He's not coming back the way they want him to. And they will reject him because of that, because he doesn't fit into their box or into their denominational box or into their Christianity removed from Judaism box or their Democratic Party box. Oh, boy. Right? Yeah. 
the first time he, the first time he came, he said, I only came for the lost children of the house of Israel. What do they do yeah. with that one? Yeah. It's, it's well, you, you better throw your four spiritual laws. I, I, I'm not putting them down, but they didn't even they didn't even understand its mission. We're part of it, but we're not the main part. Yeah. All right, let's take a break right there. Go we'll get a cup of coffee. Uh, be well. Be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment, all that stuff. Be right back. Your knees hit the floor in 24. I mean, all those little one liners they come up with. <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Thrive in five. Whenever when we get to 25, it'll be the thrive again. Every five, we got the fuck thrive. So, Chris. Now what? Now what? Now what? Now what? Which prophetic voice out there is calling out what they think will happen this year? Well, Chuck Pierce was already warning us of uh, for the, like the first three months. I think he was saying uh, financial hardship, war. He was saying that middle of last year, if not sooner, if not earlier. It's amazing how a bunch of freaking Arabs can throw the world in, in a topsy turvy like this, in, all because of what they did in southern Israel. Yeah. Eighty days now, like a long time. It's like three months, almost three months. It's crazy.
And in the same way, we were wondering, you know, why the Democratic Party was having such a hard time re renouncing and denouncing Antifa. And when Antifa and BLM were out there rioting and burning down our cities, they wouldn't renounce them or denounce them. <laughs> in the same way, it's amazing how how Arab nations don't renounce this. That's how you know there's an agenda. Yep. And the courts of heaven are watching. It's the last thing I'm about is vindication. You know, oh, I'll, I'll, we'll be vindicated. No, man, it's not about that. It's about the people, the amount. It's it's about the the whole crops of humans we're losing in the process that we're going to lose in the next six months. That to me, that's what this is about. It's about how do we keep people. How do we equip people so that they don't fall away and so that they overcome? And how do we reach people to understand the basics of what's going on so that they can come to real, to a, uh, an understanding of, of, of Jesus that will transform their lives, that we can then equip? That's what this is about. It's always That's what it's always been about to me. It's never been about, uh oh, you wait and see. You'll see. You're wrong. You'll see. Oh, man, who cares? This isn't about being right or wrong. It is, but not like that type of right or wrong. It's not about that. It's about opening eyes so that they understand and repent and then alter and course correct. Not, you'll see. You'll get your due. That's, that's ridiculous. That's silly. That's small-mindedness. I have no time for that. Those are the people that get their head chopped off. You don't gloat over the things that Even your enemy's face. No. You. No. That's what brings us to see his compassion and his mercy. You don't gloat over your enemies. Yeah, last week I got together with this uh, uh, guy, a friend that uh, we made up here. He's an older gentleman. He used to be the uh, president of Fresno State and then uh, College of the Redwoods and then the Siskiyou's College up in Shasta. So really educated guy and uh, really been open to the Hebrew roots and end times. And these are people that me and Linda have been getting close to and some other friends that have come in. The one guy we prayed for that got healed. And so we all got together and talked about finances. And... Uh, they listened. They they perked up. One of the guys said, "You know, we don't have to worry. Things are things always correct themselves." I go, "There's a scripture, and, and uh, the Lord delayeth his coming." People just say, "Oh, everything's going to go on like it is." So he was talking. He goes, "Yeah, I've been looking at this." I go, "Yeah," and there's people that I know down at the healing rooms, and they're talking about what do you do in the short term? What do you do right now? He goes. I'm learning just to do these three month annuities, six month with my finances. That's smart. You need to be able to get to your money. You need to get be able to get to it as quickly as possible. Don't ever stop doing that. And they're talking to go, but why? I go, because it's a time of preparation. It's just wisdom. Work while because, it's still day. You know, and, the, nice and one guy he he got, he goes, So that's what that means. The Lord delay is coming. I go, Yeah. I go, it's just a general attitude of ambivalence. And um, they're the ones that say, ah, the Lord, he's going to, this has always been out there. It's not. 
we're living in a different season and it's going to take a different mindset and how to think nothing to be afraid of, but you better exercise wisdom and knowledge. And there are people out there that have those kind of skills to know what to do in seasons that we're going into. You know, they just had that one guy on Michael Rood and uh, talking about finances, which was really, really good. And, and he has one perspective. And these other people have different perspectives. But the fact that I got to speak into these people about not only the Lord's return, but about what the scriptures teach, what about what Sabbath is and how we get shalom. And when we live in obedience, there's going to be a peace that comes over us. And so um, I thought that was a real interesting way as we coming into the new year it was between christmas and new year's we all got together and talked about those things some of us guys well chris how was your holidays uh it was good my mom and sister were here for a bit my sister lives in the area but my mom came she always comes down for a week or two so you know it's a different season with with older teenagers, you know? Oh, yeah. So they have in mind their traditions and what's important. And some of them are like, wow, you're really hanging on this? And others, like, they're just, they're over some things. So it's cool. <laughs> I guess what I noticed, it just felt... Um, it felt slower than usual. Yeah. And which was nice. I think part of that is aging, you know, both me and Steph, as we get older, you, you I'm saying this in a, not in a rude way. I'm not meant to say in a rude way, but like other people's opinions don't matter so much. Like. You've, you've become more uncomfortable with owning your own life and not being swayed by other people's expectations. Yeah. Which I think, I think you have to, you know, you focus on your kids, you focus on your family and. Oh, that exactly. God created us to be relational, you know, and there's this balance between we're always supposed to interact with humans, blessing others, serving others, but also the other's influence can also distract you from what God wants you to do personally or leading your family. And I was noticing it that, that this year. Um, no conflicts, nothing like that. Just, um, and it, and maybe, and maybe it's, me trying to walk more in Torah, I don't know, or or more what you guys have been practicing for a lot more years than I. My my family, did I tell you guys my family gave me a like legit menorah this year? No, no, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I can't. Uh, what well, it was? It was actually it was actually the first night of Hanukkah. And I came home, I had to be in Seattle and I walked in the door just, just about five 30, you know, sunsets four 30. I walk in the door. And when I was lit, when I, uh, when my kids were little, when I'd come home from work or something, they'd be sitting up at, at the top of the stairs. And they, this is so cute when they were three, four, five, six, it probably stopped when they're about 10, 11, they would jump up and down at the top of the stairs and go, daddy, 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 daddy. Well, they were doing that. I, I walked in the door and they're 16 and 14 and they're doing that daddy, 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 which they're excited to see me. And I could tell it was a joke. They're like messing with me. And uh, Steph's like, we, we want you to open something. So they had a big old box for me. You need to open this now. I'm like, okay. It was like two, two wrapped presents. And they got to open the big one first. And I opened it and it was a menorah. It's like this, uh, I don't know if it's bronze, but it's like a heavy, heavy metal, like, you know, painted black matte. Like it's, it's really great. That's and awesome. So they said, we wanted you to have this and we need, we, we need, this was important to you. And, and then a box of candles, you know, the 44 candles or whatever. And so it was, it was cool because 
we did that every night. We lit the candles together. And um, so I don't know. I just felt peaceful this year, although the, the outside was chaos. Like, right. they, they, the, you know, you have all the events and, and my wife was even saying no to invitations and stuff. Just like, I just, I just want to stay home tonight. So I don't know. That's how my holidays were. Peace in the chaos. Maybe that's the way to say it. There you go. Brothers, I have to go pick up my grandbabies. I told Alan earlier because they're off school and I got to go get them from my daughter. All right. Go be Love you all. See you next week. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.